Bucks go back at work today getting ready for their Monday night football game. Man, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman will be here. Lisa Salters. It's going to be a big deal, man. Ravens against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and what an opportunity for them to further separate themselves. They're 4-2. You beat this Baltimore Ravens team, which some people think might be the best team in the NFL, much less the AFC, and you catapult yourself to a different place, and they got Atlanta at home. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun for the Buccaneers if they're able to get this one. So we'll have a chance to talk to Baker Mayfield, um, Coach Todd Bowles, later today and uh, see what they've been up to and uh, you know, kind of lay out the rest of the week. But first and foremost, uh, along the Buccaneers lines, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but Sean Tucker, the Bucks running back, second year running back that had such a great game against the New Orleans Saints. He was named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week, uh, which is uh, quite an honor when you well, consider. How can you not be RB1 if you're the Offensive Player of the Week? Well, you know, that's that's the whole debate, right? Like, and I've I've heard people say, you know, uh, that, well, they'll go back to Rashad as the number one, and and then they'll try to work the other two guys in. And I've talked to Leon Cohen about this, and we'll talk to him again this week um, on, I guess it'll be, what, Thursday? Um, but, or Friday, I guess. But the thing is, it's, it's really hard to get two running backs involved, although you need to. Uh, it's even much harder to game plan to try to have three. I, I just don't see how that's really tenable. I'm not saying that you wouldn't play Rashad at all. Um, but listen, they'd be remiss after that performance. Not When you talk about riding a hot hand, and that's why I think when Baker Mayfield came out and said, this is more than just the next man up mentality. What he just did out there, you know, is beyond that, right? It's showing that, hey, I'm a special player, and I can do special things if I'm given this opportunity because it wasn't a fluke. You, you put on the tape, you see him, uh, you know, make the cuts, uh, press the hole, you know, explode through it, get skinny, get, finish the runs, have speed, outrace people, score touchdowns, like all of that, almost, what, 200 yards total offense, a couple of tutties to go with it. And that's your first real opportunity in two seasons to really run the ball. Before that, I think he had a total of maybe 14 attempts in two years. And so a guy that burst onto the scene like that, it would be malpractice, in my opinion, okay? Malpractice if you didn't start that game the same way you ended it in New Orleans. You hung 51 points on a team. You ran for over 220-something yards in the second half, and you're not going to start the next game that way against a Ravens team that can actually control the football and has all the great offensive weapons that you want to keep off the field. I think it would be malpractice, and, and I will throw that at – Liam Cohen this week just just like that. Um, well, when you hear when you hear teammates and and people in the organization saying that wasn't just next man up stuff, that was like yeah, they're they're telling you they know this guy's good. Yeah, they know that he should play more. Right, like they're telling you that they're not just say oh he had a great performance. You know he's been working hard. He, you know the the yeah. typical platitudes like that. Right. When you start saying no, that's more than next man. Yeah. You're not saying oh you know he should just go back to RB three. Like no, you're you're saying hey we know this guy's good. We know. He deserves more time. He, we know he deserves a shot to keep doing this because he was fantastic. And the idea, the idea that, you know, there's this, sort of this axiom or cliche sometimes that people say, well, you can't lose your job because of injury. I got news for you. In the National Football League, there's only two ways you get your job. You, you know how you get it? The guy in front of you wasn't very good and you're better or somebody got hurt and you got your opportunity. Those are the only two ways in football you get a chance. Right. Everybody mm -hmm. out there got their chance that way, you know, uh, and, and I know Robert Haynes, he played really, really well the other night and good for him. He was their starting center for two years. How did he get his starting job? Ryan Jensen was knocked out for two seasons. OK, why wasn't he starting this year? Because they hired somebody they thought was better. They drafted him in the first round, you know, and it's that way across the board. And it's, it's a bottom line business. And that's why I've been saying for, what, a couple of years now, love Rashad White, love how hard he plays, love, love his temperament, what a great guy he is. He's not productive. He's not efficient. He doesn't have the efficiency of, of you know, average versus number of rushing attempts. And, yeah, he was 10 yards shy of 1,000 yards last year. But his rushing average was 3.4. 
and this year it's 2.2. And I mean, at some point, and I think we're there, you got to recognize the talent. And more than that, it's again, malpractice if you don't play the best players. And I got news for you. No one dislikes Rashad White or doesn't think he has a role on this team. And mm-hmm. it's a long season. The chances that both these running backs, Bucky Irving and now Sean Tucker, are going to go through the entire year unscathed is probably very, very slim. So you're going to have opportunities for that's you know that's why that's why Sean Tucker was in the game because Rashad White got hurt. But now that you've seen him, how you cannot go back to that guy and ride the wave after he's just won Player of the Week on offense for the NFC, the entire league or the entire conference? What are you doing? Like what what business are you in? Are you in the winning business? Because that's winning. That's not. Well, you know, Rashad was the number one. It's not fair. We, you know, we, he's still going to keep his job. You know, you can't can't lose your job. No, 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 no. There was a time, and it's it's ancient. It's a cliche now. You know, the old, you know, Lou Gehrig played all those games in a row. Well, who did he replace? A guy named Wally Pip. You know, and that's that's sort of, you know, that's sort of the uh, the standard that's used for somebody to lose their job is Ask that, Drew Bledsoe. At, yeah, there you go, Drew Bledsoe. You know. First round pick, highly paid quarterback, just signed an enormous deal with the Patriots, gets knocked out and sent to the hospital by the New York Jets. In comes number 199, Tom Brady, and the rest, as they say, is history. And Bledsoe continued to be a really good quarterback when he got healthy uh, and almost almost played in the Super Bowl. It was a choice between him or Tom Brady, who got hurt in the AFC Championship game, and Bledsoe finished up. Um, but we know we know the rest of the story. Uh, we know that, you know, the GOAT is not Drew Bledsoe, it's Tom Brady. And it was Drew Bledsoe at Tom Brady's roast, not the other way around. So, you know, that that's this league, right? That's that's just football. And it's not as if, you know, this guy came out of nowhere, right? I mean, he was one of the best rushers in the ACC for about three years, you know. And you talk about Syracuse football, and you're talking about guys like Jim Brown, and Leroy Kelly, and, you know, on and on. Um, he was right, Larry Zonka. He was right up there, if not above most. I think he's like fifth overall in rushing yards, career rushing yards at Syracuse. So his time came. He knocked it out of the freaking park. And if he doesn't get the first or second carry, if, if he's not at least the second running back to tote the football on Monday night, it's malpractice. It just is. And, and I'll say it like that to Liam Cohen when I talk to him on Thursday. You know, I mean, it, it, hey, it's not it's not show friends. It's show business, man. You know, they're in the business of winning games and playing the best players. And right now, the best player is Sean Tucker. And he proved that against New Orleans. Now, different defense, obviously, doesn't mean he's going to run for, you know, 137. But you're going to give him every opportunity to do it. And, and Bucky Irving. Is, has to continue to be a bigger part of your offense. Because Bucky, if you had given those carries to Bucky, he might have done that, right? Because his 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 season average is over five, what, five, over five, five a carry for the season. You know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all in on that. I just don't know, you know, how you do anything different. But, hey, we'll see. We'll have a chance to talk to them. And this is going to be a tough game. Um, I think did I mentioned the stat that Lamar Jackson had against the NFC. It's like twenty-five and one, or twenty-six and one, or twenty-three and one. Like yeah, and so, one. yeah, something like that. It's just it's insane. So I mean, the work is cut out to say the very least, and especially on defense. We'll have a lot of time to talk about the Bucks, you know, going forward this week. And uh, of course, it's a Monday night football game, so we'll be talking, we'll be doing a preview instead of on on uh, Friday's podcast. We'll do that uh, Monday morning uh, for you, and and. Uh, and deal with all of that stuff as well. Um, we've got a couple of mailback questions, and you can always submit those anytime during the week. We'll tell you how to do that in just a minute. Uh, also wanted to talk about something that came up. You know, we, we mentioned it the other night, Tom Brady getting approved as a minority owner for the Las Vegas Raiders. But more talk about Tom Brady and a discussion I kind of got in on line on social media with one of my former colleagues that I want to get to in just a minute. But first... If you guys haven't been to uh, International Plaza Mall, and I'm sure you've been to the mall, but if you haven't been to Breitling Boutique, you have to go. 
Um, they're one of the best Swiss watchmakers anywhere, and they've been in business, Breitling Boutique has, or Breitling has, for uh, 140 years. Now, they have a boutique store uh, over in International Plaza Mall. It is unlike anything in that mall. You go in there, you're going to get treated like a celebrity, uh, the kind of you know NFL quarterbacks they're used to dealing with. Um, they have a beautiful bar. Take your time. Look around. Men's and women's watches, some of the best quality, all kinds, dive watches, the Navitimers, uh, you name it. But what's going on right now is something you want to take advantage of because right now they are celebrating the NFL's 104th anniversary. And they're doing it with these beautiful chronomat watches that they're known for. And they have one for every team in the National Football League. That's 32 different teams represented there. And the way they do it is, and, and the one that I've seen posted, um, I've seen a couple, uh, the Miami Dolphins. Like, so you got like this beautiful chronomat watch, and it's got the aquamarine face, uh, very small, um, you know, Miami Dolphins logos. Uh, but it's just, it's a gorgeous watch. And if you're a football fan, I don't know how you don't get one of these. I really don't. Uh Whatever team you root for, the Bucks, the Dolphins, the Jaguars, any team in the National Football League, they have it, and they're going to fit you with it, and you're going to love it. You're going to love this watch. So it's Breitling Boutique, International Plaza Mall. Get over there, spend some time with your, it's for your yourself, your wife, your girlfriend, you name it. Uh, they got something for everybody. Breitling Boutique, and tell them that Rick and Steve sent you. So this was interesting. You know, we mentioned this the other day. Of course, uh, Tom Brady at the NFL owners meetings in, uh, I believe they were in Atlanta this time. Uh, was approved for his minority ownership of the Las Vegas Raiders. And he came, by the way, I don't know how you feel about this if you're a Patriots fan, but they, Mark Davis, the owner of the Raiders, walked Tom Brady into the facility in Las Vegas, and they had the entire organization kind of in the atrium there, up and you know, high and low and everywhere. And it was, uh, it was an interesting video. <laughs> it was kind of surreal. I mean, first of all, Give it up for Raider fan embracing this guy, right? <laughs> I mean, somewhere over without in the, the tuck rule, somewhere I mean, in the FC, FCA or what? What was the thing John Gruden called? Fired football coaches, FF, FFCA. Yep, he's over there with Gruden loves football podcast. Somewhere he's looking at his video. Go, I'll tell you what, man, that guy killed me with the tuck rule. Are you kidding me? I can't believe we we let Tom Brady and Las Vegas Raider them. Um, but there he was, and I think he was wearing a little, you know, silver jacket with a black pair of pants. I don't know, but, uh, he was uh, given a hero's welcome as a, uh, as their new boss, as one of their minority owners. Um, don't know if he got 3%, 5%. I heard it was probably, if you do the math, $6 billion company or team value is probably somewhere in around $300 million purchase. So, Hey, if you got $300 million in your couch and you want to do something with it, by a National Football League team. But what had come out as part of the owners' meetings approval, since Tom is the, you know, number one color analyst on Fox. Hey, before we get to before we get to the the restrictions. Yeah. Can you put a, someone in your Hall of Fame while they're an owner of another team? Um well there's the, current I mean, well there's I mean, current owners in the Hall of Fame. Well um, no, I'm I'm saying like the Bucks Ring of Honor. Oh, can you put can you put Tom Brady in the Bucks ring out while he's an owner of a different team? That seems a I little he, weird. <laughs> it's weird. He's a minority owner though, but yeah, no, I know what yeah. you're saying. But I'm just I mean, you know, he's already in the Patriots. They already took care of theirs. Yeah, they got theirs out of the way right away. Yeah. We have Tom's not in the Bucks ring of honor yet. Mm -mm. Are you going to introduce him? Former Buccaneers quarterback and current Raiders owner? <laughs> well, you know, if they had thought about it, they play the Raiders this year at home. <laughs> Could have just could have just walked him out there. We know who you're rooting for, Tom. <laughs> and he could have been calling the game for that matter. Uh, yeah, he's he's got a lot of hats, man. I but mean, then you're he not always supposed did. to really have contact with other teams. How are you going to put him in your ring of honor? Well, the contact. I mean, they're, they're putting his name up there. He's not actually nailing the no, nailing I, I, it I, into the But wall. I mean, you know, like the whole process of leading up to it, you're really not supposed to be contacting other teams and this and well, I, I'm, it, it's kind of a rhetorical joke question. But I understand. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot. There's, so his his restrictions, which I think we we enumerated the other day, but I'll do it here now. Um, as as being a minority owner, he had to agree to, uh, and, and he's a broadcaster. That's the biggest thing. His current job pays him thirty seven and a half million dollars a year 
to be the color analyst on the number one team, right? So, by the way, if he took that 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 paycheck to buy the Raiders, I mean that's really about eight years of of doing Fox just to buy the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, because three seventy five is the total of the contract. So, I mean, he must have had it laying around in his couch because he didn't seem to bulk at it. Whatever, it, whatever it was that he gave Mark Davis, but um, so the restrictions are. Uh, that he's not permitted to be in another team's facility. So he can't, you know, a lot of, most weeks, and it doesn't happen every time. Like some broadcasters do their meetings on Zoom calls and things like that. But you will see uh, very often on Friday, sometimes Saturday, but sometimes on Friday, whatever team is calling the game will show up to practice. Now, we'll get into this more in just a second, but that's, you know, that's, he's not allowed to see practice. He's also not permitted to attend the broadcast production meetings either in person or virtually. And and I was going to say, some of these production meetings, you know, when they did Thursday Night Football, Al Michaels talked to people on Zoom calls, right? But then very often the broadcasters will come in a day early. uh, And if it's the Fox team and you'll see, you know, all the sideline, you know, everybody, Aaron Andrews and, and, uh, you know, Kevin Burkhardt and and now, now it would be Tom, but it used to be Greg Olson. They would all have a meeting. And they'd have select players. They'd have bowls in there. They'd have, you know, the quarterback maybe, um, you know, Baker Mayfield, maybe a couple other players. It just depends on who's available. And and they don't get them all at once. They, they'll they get them incrementally because guys will be lifting and doing different things after Friday's practice. But they have a chance to kick it around and talk about how things are going and just get a better feel for, you know, what the team is, is like, where they're at, and any questions they have going into the game. And and so he's not permitted to do the production meetings either in person or virtually. Uh, he's prohibited, and I think this is interesting, he's prohibited from criticizing game officials and other clubs. So if you see a bad call, you can't just go, hey, that guy, that line judge sucks. You know, like, that's a horrible call or something. Now, you, you know, Brady has talked about, you know, the game and the rules in general. Like, he speaks very often about how you know, I don't think it's fair that defensive linemen, you know, have to virtually, you know, lay a quarterback, you know, on the ground softly to get a sack or to get penalized, like, you know, taking the physicality out of the game. He'll say that stuff. Uh, but to actually call out an official for a bad call, I guess they want him to, you know, not do that. Uh, he's subject to the NFL's gambling policy. I, You know, unless he has Shohei Atani's bookie, he should be good there. Uh, suspect to the NFL's anti-tampering policy. Well, <laughs> that one might be a problem because Tom has tampered before. <laughs> and so if if the Miami Dolphins, who lost draft picks, haven't learned their lessons, hopefully Tom has because uh, he was talking to the Dolphins, you know, while he was still with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So all of this, right, comes about. And look, let's be honest. Uh, he knew when he signed the contract with Fox that he was still going down the path of wanting to become a minority owner uh, of this football team. And so against this backdrop, um, Eric Deggins, who works for NPR, and he used to be a colleague of ours at the Tampa Bay Times. In fact, he was Tom Jones' first guest. This is really his claim to fame. Sorry, Eric. But his claim to fame is that he was Tom Jones' first guest on his new podcast, which we have not been asked to do anything with, by the way, Steve. Tom hasn't even talked to me about it yet. <laughs> it's like, wouldn't you think? Like for uh, years, he's talked about wanting to start a podcast, and we've talked about it. Then he goes to start one, never talks to me. <laughs> it's just so, so strange. <laughs> uh, you think you know a guy, right? Uh, we might have to go back to that. You know, we don't talk. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk about him anymore. But, um, but anyway, so Tommy had who? Yeah, right. Had Eric Degas on his podcast, and. Um, so the thing was in, uh, I think Bleacher Report listed the, you know the restrictions and whatnot with this nice graphic. So Degens wrote, he goes, the uh, you know the the Bleacher Report graphic lists what Tom Brady cannot do as a, as an on air person because of his NFL ownership stake. Could any other person be a football broadcaster with these kinds of restrictions? How is he supposed to get better at his job? And he really needs to get better. Okay. Well, I don't know that everybody would be able to function very well uh, as a broadcaster with some of these restrictions. Um, But I do think he will. And so sort of what I responded was what I think I think is Peter King would say, and that is, you know, for Brady, there's a couple of things to unpack here for Brady. He, he is in a unique position because he played 20 years. He went to 10 Super Bowls. He won seven of them. 
and he can see anything he needs to see on film. You know, those Friday and even Saturday practices, even less, but the Friday practices that you might see broadcasters come out there and try to watch. I've been to a hundred thousand of them. It seems no, not literally, but like a, a, a whole bunch. And it's the shortest practice of the week. I think maybe other than Saturday, it's typically, you know, red zone in two minute, uh, type stuff. No one's in pads. There's no tackling. Um, you're not going to write about what they're doing from a, from a play standpoint. Now, could you get tipped off on, you know, Hey, on this goal line, they do like to do this or that maybe. Um, but in real time, you got about 16 seconds to, to talk as the color analyst anyway. Um, but if Tom Brady never sees another practice, this guy was, you know, studied more than anyone in the history probably of, of the quarterback position, and it showed on the field. He was always overprepared, uh, and he's going to prepare, as I'm sure he has to this point, for his broadcasting job. So if Tom Brady never sees another practice, um, it's not going to put him at a deficit with the 23 years experience of playing in the, in, at the highest level at quarterback. Um, the other part of it uh, that was mentioned was the production meetings. <sighs> yeah, maybe a little more so there, but even there, um, you know, I've never known coaches in this league to trust anybody. Like seriously, they're not gonna they're not gonna, you know, give you a peek behind any curtain, no matter where you come from. You know, if they've got something that they're sitting on that they think is, you know. Are they, you know, was Sean Payton going to tell somebody before the Super Bowl that he won, hey, second half, we're going to onside kick this baby? I don't think they would do that, you know? And so, you know, what you're going to get or, you know, evaluations of certain players, maybe injury status, um, generalities, you know, about how the season's going, uh, the opponent, stuff like that. I'm not saying it's not useful because if it wasn't useful, no one would do it. Um because access is, is access. You can ask anything you want. But I also don't think there's so many, you know, advantages to it that 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 Brady of all people will be at a disadvantage because Tom Brady can pick up the phone and call anybody. I don't see anything on here that says you can't do the production meetings virtually or in person, but there's nothing that says he can't if he calls Lamar Jackson tomorrow, I think Lamar Jackson is going to pick up that phone. I think he's. I think he's going to answer, and I think he's going to talk to Tom Brady, and I think the same is true with any coach in this league, uh, or any, or probably any player in this league. So he doesn't have to be in a production meeting. Plus, he has his guys in there to begin with. If there's something specific he wants and asked, they can ask. So again, Friday practices, production meetings, eh, okay, um, and you know the other thing is that. He does need to get better at his job. Yes, he does. But I don't think that practices and production means as as how he's going to get better. I think it's just getting comfortable with the timing um, and allowing himself, um, you know, to share all that he knows, you know, and not just spit out the obvious. But he's not sharing anything he knows he outside of not you yet. gotta you gotta you gotta throw the ball to your number one receiver and get him comfortable. Okay, everybody yeah, knows that. We, not everyone's yet. talked about that for years. Like like tell me what happened on this play. Who screwed up? Who did something great? Who, right. What did the offensive line do that I didn't see? Right. Because I because I don't understand how this play was supposed to be run because I'm not a football player. He like came he close like, to it. The closest I've seen, and I haven't seen every game he's called. Um, he's mm-hmm. called three Dallas games, which, geez, um, you know, if you're cursed enough to do that, good luck. The the best the best game I think he's he's called that I've knew the most was was the Bucks game because he was so familiar with the personnel. He had played there. He won Super Bowls with Mike he, and Chris and so he, many. He of these told guys. you a lot about the players. I didn't get a lot of. I didn't get a lot of like teaching me. Well, something. he I don't came. Know. You know what? Like, he almost Romoed one. He almost Romoed a touchdown to Mike Evans because right. If you go back to it, he says, "Oh, they got a run play called here. Oh, Baker's checking out of it. He's checking out of it." Yep. And and he he, he said they got you know they got man to man or zone. They're gonna play over here. And he, he kind of while it was happening saw mm-hmm. the touchdown to Mike Evans. That's about that's about as close as he came to doing a like a Tony Romo prediction mm-hmm. thing. Um, but that's what he should be doing a lot more. And then after a play, 
Like, why did this play work? Why did it not? Why did this sack happen? Why did this something I don't know? Right? Why did why did this running back, you know, look like he didn't have a hole, and all of a sudden he's gone? Who missed the block? Right? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I mean, you know, why didn't the receiver see the hot? You know, why did he? Why did he pull the ball down? Like, give me, give me through the eyes of the quarterback. And and I think a lot of that though is is him getting out of his own head and relaxing and, mm-hmm. and just, you know, saying what comes to him right away. You know what I mean? Right. Like just right. naturally as, as if you're a fan instead, I think he's still thinking about how he sounds, you know, his voice is a little like, you know, you well, can hear- but I wonder if he's going to be thinking about those restrictions as well. Like I can't criticize a player. I can't, I, you, know. you know, but he can, criti- he can criticize. That's yes. the other part that's, that's confusing yeah. about this. And I can't imagine that, you know, the, the whole notion that, you know, not permitted to witness practice. We talked about that. Um, prohibited from publicly officiating, uh, criticizing of game officials and other I'm, clubs. If you say, I think the official got that wrong, is that criticizing? Well, I guess it could be interpreted that way. But I think if you say specifically, like, this line judge is crap, well, it's yeah, probably but, closer uh, to that, right? The yeah, guys but, are going to miss calls. If you think it's a bad call or you think, well, you know, it looked like it, looked like it could have been interference because he did make contact, but they didn't get the flag. I don't think that that Roger Goodell is not going to slap his hand on that. He's just not because any, any broadcaster can do that. Right. If you come out and say, I think officiating is the worst I've ever seen it in the national football league. Yeah. I think that's a problem. Now they got a guy that's an official in the booth with them at Fox as well. Uh, and or they don't criticize booth, anybody either. York, so. They never say squat. I, I think the idea of official, like the Pereira's and all those guys in the booth, I think it's a wonderful idea. It is so poorly executed. They never. They will never criticize the official. They 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 hedge their bets every. If they disagree, it's like, well, I don't know about that, but you know, they're they got a tough job to do. That's like, what no. it usually comes like, down to. It usually comes down to like I could see it going either way. Because you disagree with them doesn't mean you that you think they're crappy at their job. Like, you know, you disagree with a call. Okay, like I I, I think those officials in the booth. I it was a wonderful idea. It's just poorly executed across all sports because they refuse to criticize anybody. They refuse to disagree. It's they hedge their bets. Yeah, well, they know all those guys because they're not that far yeah. removed from being one of them. I, I, I don't think that that I again. I don't think Tom Brady gets a call from anyone on Park Avenue if he says, "I think that's a missed call." I just don't. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I right. could be wrong. Now, if you just if you get on officials and say, "You know what, officiating is killing football," or, or something like that, every announcer, if there's one of these games where there's a flag fest. They go and there's another flag, and well, every play it seems like we have a flag. Like they'll do that. Tom can do that as well if he wants to. Um, but what what happens when what happens when Tom Brady uh, doing a Denver Broncos game, rival of the the Raiders, and the Broncos are having a bad game, and so Brady starts pointing out some of the bad things they do. Like, is the Broncos ownership going to call the NFL, going, "Hey, why is he criticizing our team?" Uh, they can call. I don't think it's going to no. – it's not going to rise to a level. Yeah. Look, this is all – I. first of all, yes, it looks good on a piece of paper. It looks like you care as a league. You know, like mm-hmm. we're going to really – we're going to really rein this guy in. Uh, I, and I was gotten this discussion with Tom Jones about this a little bit. And he was like, yeah, well, a couple things. One, if Brady walks away – and look, no one expects him to do 10 years. I mean no one, right, expects him to be a 10-year broadcaster. But if and when he walks away, could he use this as well? I couldn't do. I couldn't be very good because they put so many restrictions on me that I was constantly thinking about what I can and can't say. And frankly, with all these restrictions, it's hard for me to be, a, you know, to to be a, an adequate an, a color analyst. I don't think I've never known Tom Brady to make excuses, and I don't think he's going to start now, right? Mm-hmm. I don't. Yes. Um, and have we known Tom Brady to bend a few rules in his career? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So rules. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think the Brady rules is something that he's going to worry about. Um, and then, you know, like finally he's, he's going to rise or fall based on how he, you know, what his insights are and how he can relate those. Like, this is all going to be about, can we get out of Tom Brady's head, which is 23 years of, of the greatest, quarterback who sees the game better than anyone of all time how does he get that out of his head and onto the television microphone uh how quickly how thoroughly uh how how perceptively that's that's really it the other thing is yep 
his value with Fox, like the idea that Fox would say, wow, you're really hurting my guy. They oh, could I don't, say yeah, that. I don't, I don't think they walk away. But Fox is in the Tom Brady business, right? This is n- this has never been that we think he, you know, day one is going to be better than Greg Olson or, you know, better than John Madden or something like that. Nobody ever, nobody ever put those. I mean, the, the name puts those expectations that comes with it, right? Because that's he's the greatest player of all time. So you're supposed to assume he'll be the greatest broadcaster of all time. He's certainly the highest paid of all time. So all those things kind of put that pressure on it. But the value to Fox goes so far beyond his 60 minutes, um, you know, on Sunday. It's not even funny. I mean, they've got, you know, sponsors wanting to line up to shake this guy's hand. Um, and when you do, as my wife did and wouldn't let it go one time at the, at Canton, but that's another story. Um, you're impressed by him and you want to be around him. And you know what? Maybe I want to be around Tom Brady a little bit and I'll sign up for another year at Fox, you know, with the NFL today on Fox sponsorships, uh, because I work for, you know, Kraft foods or something. Mm -hmm. Um, that's going to happen, does happen, will continue to happen. And that my friends is the that's why Fox wanted them because they wanted to be in the Brady business and the Brady business is good. The brand is good. Um, you know, he looks like a young John Kennedy, you know, with his suit. Like I, I don't know what else you want. Uh, it's a visual medium at the end of the day. Uh, and everybody knows who Tom Brady is. Now he's just got to, you know, hone his game and, 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 and I think he'll work at it. And I don't know him to be unsuccessful at anything. But the notion that, oh, man, these restrictions. And, you know, when, when me and Eric went back and forth, he started talking about, well, I think you're just, you know, you're kind of forcing uh, banality on the guy. And I'm like, well, if there's banality, it won't be because of this, right? It's just going to be because Tom didn't didn't get where he needed to go. Like, it's in there. You know what I mean? He's got to figure a way to get it out, get it out quickly, um, make his points, tell us something we don't know that only, that, that, that only he sees when, as he sees it in real time. And it won't, I don't think it's because he didn't go to practice. You can't convince me it was because, well, if Tom Brady could have just gone to practice, man, he would have been a Hall of Fame broadcaster. Or if Tom Brady could have just done all those production meetings. No, because again, Tom can call anybody day or night. I promise you, if he calls me, I'm answering. And, and I don't have the information he's got, but so is C.J. Stroud. So is Patrick Mahomes, by the way, right? And he's in the he's in the AFC West against the Raiders. The other thing is the Raiders aren't that good, so it really wouldn't matter what Tom Brady knows in the first place. <laughs> Unless Tom Brady's going to play quarterback, then you know now first owner player. Yeah, owner player. The uh, the word is, you know the early uh, buzz was that it Tom's going to go straight to. Bill Belichick and try to convince him to coach the Raiders. I don't think coaching is the issue. By the way, I thought he left New England because of Bill Belichick. But <laughs> he did. That's my whole thing. So let me get this straight: what you hated to play for, you now want to to, to run your organization. I, I had to play under this guy, so you guys do too. <laughs> That's right. You're gonna like it. I had to do it. You're gonna like it. You know, it's like the dad thing, right? My dad maybe cut the grass every Saturday and you know, push the lawnmower backwards, like you know. It's, I just, I don't see that. Um, now I, I would say this, he might have some opinions on the quarterback position. I think he can look at film and say, this guy sees the field. This guy knows what's going on. This guy doesn't, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, he can play from the pocket. He can't, um, very few quarterbacks can anymore because they're all coming out in the RPOs and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's interesting to me. Like I'm fascinated by what Brady, first of all, I like Tom, um, Saw him in the press box. He stopped, said hello, shook my hand. How are things going? How's it, you know, all that. Uh, and, and it's, it's when you're in his, when you're in his presence, it was Charles Barkley used to say, man, I look at, I look at Tom's eyes, man. I looked at, don't look in those eyes. Cause you look in those eyes, you get lost in those big blue eyes. And, uh, and so he has that effect, but, uh, uh, you know, like I said, it's impressive. He's impressive. And he has a presence. Now, voice for, you know, NFL games? Eh, I don't know. I listened to Greg Olson. He did the Bucks game the other day. I didn't think he was that good. I thought he was just okay. You know, like, and I like Greg Olson. I thought he did a great mm-hmm. job. 
uh, with Kevin Barkhart. But I, but in the game that I had, you know, with the with the Bucks in the, in the New Orleans, I was just like, well, okay, man, you know, wasn't that special? Mm-hmm. Just, just okay. Um, so whatever. Anyway, that's my soapbox on, uh, and I hope Eric understands where I'm coming from. It's just that I've been, I've been out here for you know more than three decades, and it, it sounds great. Oh, they get to go to practice. They get they get that Saturday. They get that. They, we, we they talk get to about watch practice. Pra- what are we talking about, man? Not the game, man. Not the game he's going to call. We're talking about practice, man. What are we talking about, man? Practice? I know it's important. I know they got to go. But, you know, most uh, like a lot of crews, the number one crews, you'd be surprised. They don't show up, man. The producer will go. Maybe the sideline reporter, right? Uh, I tell you where they do go when they come to Tampa. They end up at Burns on Saturday night. I know that. Um, and why wouldn't you? On the yeah, right. Account, come on. But aside from a good steak, that's where you get your information, by the way. You know, if you want to know what's going on with the Bucks, go to Burns and find out. Um, so, yeah, I and then, and then you know, production meetings. Like, hey, I, if Tom Brady doesn't, again, if he doesn't become a good broadcaster, it will not be because of these restrictions. It just won't, right? And, and if people may say that, and he may say that. You know, and again, I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with Tom Jones. On this, when we had the conversation, well, I think you know when he does quit in a year or two, he'll say, "Well, you know, they I, they handcuffed me. I couldn't do what I wanted. To, I didn't have the same opportunities." I've never known Brady to make a single excuse for anything, right? If if it doesn't work and he stinks, he'll be the first guy to say, "Hey, I wasn't very good at it, and and I needed to get doing busy doing something else." Or he'll just say, "I want to do more." What he'd likely say is, "I want to devote more attention to some other thing," you know. Why did he quit football? Was it because he couldn't play? Well, he couldn't play as well. But he said something the other day. He goes, you know, I always said I would quit when I suck, but that was taking too long. <laughs> I just couldn't suck fast enough. Um, so he quit. Uh, and that might be the case, too, with broadcasting. Like, it just, you know. But it'll be, be, it'll be for other reasons. I don't think it'll be for, uh, for any of the, the restrictions that he has. All right, so we got to uh, do the mailbags tomorrow then, or what do you, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, let's do those tomorrow since we didn't get to them today. Yeah, we kind of got into this a little thick for you Tom Brady fans. Uh, but I'll be at One Buck Place again today, and we'll uh, see what Baker Mayfield has to say, uh, get an update on the injury status, got to see how Mike Evans is doing, how Rashad White is doing, and all of that. If you got mailbag questions, send them to us uh, at SportsDayTV. You can reach me on Twitter at NFL Stroud, or my email address is rstroud at tampabay.com. Don't forget the Lightning game tonight. They host uh, Vegas before they head on the road for three games starting Saturday. So uh, home game number two, game number three of the season. See if they can win it four to one again, which they've won the first two by that score. Vasi is going to win the Vesna with uh, giving up one goal a game for the entire season. And uh, the Lightning, let's see, they'll have how many? Well, they'll have points. They're going to score four goals a game. So 328 points on the season would be the second highest total in NHL history. So. That's crazy just to think that. If you could guarantee four games, it's only the second highest total. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, they're off to a great start, and I expect it to continue. It better continue, Coop. You hear me? Uh, no, I don't care one way or the other. But uh, Vegas, you know, the, the first three games are tough, though. I mean, they played Carolina, which is good. Mm-hmm. They, they played a really good Vancouver team. I don't That's think they correct. played that great, but Vancouver had over 100 points last year. Yep. And, then, and then Vegas. I mean, these yep. are – there are three tough teams. And yeah, then, they and then go they'll on go on the road for uh, uh, three Eastern Conference teams. They'll go to Ottawa, Toronto, and New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. So starting Saturday, they play four four games in six days. So Nice. Nice. Yeah. So we'll, And then Cooch, of course, will score his usual goal or three. And, and uh, yeah, He's down to just five points in two games. So, you know, he's uh, really slowed down his pace. Trending south, as they say. Yeah. But what a player. Um, so that'll be fun. All right. Anyway, so... Check us out tomorrow. We'll have your mailbag questions. Thanks for listening, as always. Uh, make sure you go see our friends at Breitling Boutique, International Plaza Mall. Uh, be part of their 104th year anniversary of the National Football League. Get those chronomat watches in your favorite team colors and logos. It's Breitling Boutique, International Plaza Mall. For Steve Burstick, I'm Rick Stroud of the Tampa Bay Times. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>